The Oracle NVL function. In this video, we'll learn all about the Oracle NVL function, how to use it, and see some examples. The NVL function is used to replace an empty or a null string with another string. It's good for translating data back to the users, as we often don't want null values to appear and display to the users of an application or a system. It's also good for complicated logic in your queries, where we may not want to show null values. The syntax of the NVL function looks like this. The first parameter is the check value, which is the value to be checked if it's null. If this value is not null, it's returned by the function. If it is null, the replace value is shown. And the replace value, the second parameter, is the value that appears if the first check value is null. So let's see some examples. With these examples, we're going to set up some sample data first. We can ignore the drop table because this will just remove the table if I've already created it. Let's first create this table called NVL customers. After a moment, the table is created. Now we can insert some sample data. We're going to insert some records, which have a first name, a last name, country, number of employees, and a start date into this table. Some of the values in this table have null values on purpose, so we can test our function. There's a null value here and another one here, and one in this record as well. To insert these records all at once using SQL Developer, we can select them and highlight them. Then click on the play button up here. This will run each of these statements in order and show the output here in the output pane. Now let's select from this table just to make sure the data is in there. We can see the data is showing. We have seven records here. We have three null values in different columns. Record number five, Adam Cooper has a null value for start date. This is a date data type, so we'll check how the function handles that. Record number six for Josh Thompson has a null country value. Null values in SQL Developer are shown with this value here, bracket null bracket. And finally, record number seven, Peter Manson has a null value for employees, which is a number value. So we have null values for a text, a number, and a date. Let's have a look at some examples of the NVL function. The first example selects the first name, last name, the country column, and then uses the NVL function. The first parameter is the country column here, which is the column we're going to check for a null value. The second parameter is the string no country. This is what is shown if the NVL function finds that country is a null value. So if the country is populated, it'll show the country. If it's null, it shows the words no country. Let's run this query. We can see here we have the first name, last name, and the country column because we're just selecting the raw country value first. Then we have our NVL function here. This shows the country, so the same as the country column in most instances. You can see USA, Canada, UK here, they all match. When we get down to record number six, the country value is null. So the NVL function, when applied to that, shows the word no country. So that's how you can use the NVL function when working with a string. In the second example, we'll use the NVL function on a number value. We're selecting the first name, last name, and employee's value, which is a number, and then we're running the NVL function on the employee's value. This will return employees if it's not null, and if it's null, it will return zero. We can see after it here, we have the word fixed employees. Let's put in the as word there to be clear that this is actually a column alias. This means the heading of the column when we output it will be shown as this. Let's run the query. We can see the output is shown here. We have the first name and last name for all the records. We have the number of employees, which is a value that's in the table. Then we have this fixed employees column, which uses the table alias that we gave it. In most instances, it's the same as the employees value. However, for the value that's null down here for Peter Manson, it shows zero instead. This is great if you wanted to sum records or find averages. 
or do any other calculations on number values where records may be null. If you're not aware that a value could be null, it could be a good idea to use the NVL function in this instance. Next, we'll look at some dates. We're going to select the first name, last name, and start date from the table. Then we're going to run the NVL function on the start date column. If the start date is set, return that. But if it's null, we're going to return the 1st of January 2000. We're running the to date function, so it's returned as a date and not just as a string. Let's use the as word there to be clear about the column alias and then run the query. We can see the same results here are shown, so the same first name and last name values. The start date is shown for everybody, including the null value here. The NVL function, where it says fixed start date, shows the same start date for almost all the records. But for Adam Cooper, who had a null start date, it shows as the 1st of January 2000, because that's a value we specified in our NVL function. We don't have to use an explicit value in our NVL function. We can choose to return another column. In this example here, we're selecting the first name, last name, and country values, but we're going to use the NVL function on the country column again. We're going to return that, but if the value is null, we're going to return the last name column, whatever that may be. This might not be a realistic example, because why would you want to see the country or the last name? but it just shows the concept of returning a different column. Let's run this query. We can see all of the first name, last name, and country records here. We see the country is almost the same as the null value, or it's the same as the null value in almost every record. Except where it's null here, the NVL function returns the word Thompson, which is the user's last name here. So that's how we can use the NVL function to return a different column. Finally, we can combine several different versions of the NVL function in a single query. This will give us some cleaner looking output. We're going to select the first name and last name. We're going to use the NVL function on the country to return the words no country if there's no country selected. Let's add in the as keywords here to be clear again. For employees, we're going to return the employees value or the number zero if that's null. We're also going to return start date or the date of 1st of January 2000 if the start date is empty. Now, you can see here inside the quotes we have the words country, employees and start date. They might look readable, but what we might want to do is give the column alias the same name as the column that we're referring to. So any application that looks at this query can just see the name of the column. This way our logic is inside the query and anyone that runs this query will just see the values that return from it. Let's run the query. You can see here we have the first name and last name, just like our other queries. We show the country, but where the value was null, we show the word no country. The heading is just the word country. So if you look at this, you have no knowledge of any NVL function that's being run. Employees is the same, except when it's null, it shows zero. And start date is also the same, but where it was null, we're showing the 1st of Jan 2000. So that's how you can use the NVL function to clean up your data and return the values that you want to return instead of null. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel by using the big subscribe button on the page to keep up to date with all the Oracle SQL videos that are released. Also, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment as well.